Valve has been busier than a Squid Game participant this week. They started a new Twitter account, banned NFT games from Steam, pushed some changes to a beta branch of Half-Life 2, and introduced a new Deck Verify program. Not to mention we learned that God of War is coming to PC. We cover that and a lot more in this week's Deck News Roundup. What's good, Deck Gang? Once again, it's Friday, and that means it's time to tap in for your weekly dose of Steam Deck News. As I mentioned, there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. Eight days ago, on Thursday, October 14th, a new Valve Twitter account was unveiled, and it's called On Deck. Besides what this means for all of us Deck content creators that thought we were so clever with our naming convention, it was great to see an official Valve marketing account for the new piece of hardware that we're all excited about. And starting from day one, they delivered. The first day of tweets include never-before-seen footage of Sable and Psychonauts 2 on deck. On day two, we were treated to some footage of Devil May Cry 5. In between those tweets and since then, they also reshared some footage we've seen from devs with their dev kits. Overall, it's neat to see Valve doing a full court press on marketing this thing. It's not something I'm used to seeing from them. One tidbit I didn't see anywhere is that this account was actually created back in May 2021. When I pointed that out on Twitter, Oh, that's right y'all, I'm on Twitter. I'm going to start tweeting at least daily, so follow me and check me out at what is on deck. Anyway, when I pointed this out on Twitter, Sir Lemon replied that they probably bought this account, which is a thousand percent true. But the question is when? I checked the Wayback Machine and they only had one snapshot prior to this month and it was back in August 2020. It looked like this. So I mean, shout out to Doug from Lancaster PA for securing the bag. I think May and earlier seems like a reasonable time to assume that they started preparing their marketing efforts, which again, it's really great to see them really go all in on something. It feels like so often Valve makes a lot of their moves in silence and behind the curtains, but a lot of the news this week points to a very coordinated and all hands on, I'm sorry, I would say I'm better than this, but who are we kidding, all hands on deck effort. The day after publishing their first tweet from On Deck, Valve announced that they are banning blockchain games from Steam. Obviously, this doesn't sound directly related to Steam Deck, but it still seemed worth reporting. The Verge reports that, quote, games that use blockchain technology or let users exchange NFTs or cryptocurrencies won't be allowed on Steam, end quote. This is a new rule that Valve added to their developer onboarding documentation and apparently communicated to developers of blockchain games. As is more typical with Valve, the reasoning was not stated, although one crypto game developer said it was because these games would have items that are of real world value. That reasoning seems somewhat dubious. As The Verge pointed out, there are things like Team Fortress 2 hats or Steam trading cards that make it seem like that's not what Valve was after in the first place. You want to know what I think? I think this is Steam Deck related. Maybe I have tunnel vision, but hear me out. I think from now until December, Valve is not going to do anything that isn't directly relevant to the deck. Look, this week has been the busiest week yet in terms of Valve news. They're not choosing now to update their dev documentation and make such a large sweeping move to remove so many games from the platform at once if it's not relevant to the thing everyone at the company is focused on. And it's actually a small leap to make, in my eyes. The way this is relevant to Steam Deck is Valve is about to have more eyes on it as a company than ever, perhaps by an order of magnitude. They will be under more scrutiny, and with the Steam Deck they are seeing themselves as needing to take a lot more responsibility for what's sold on their platform. I don't think they want to get tangled up in the unregulated mess of crypto games. Okay, at this point, I've probably reached my yearly quota for crypto game discussion on this channel, but I did think it was funny that on the same day, Busta Rhymes posted this. He said, quote, should I buy a house or a link to a picture of a pixelated monkey, end quote. Look, I'm with Busta Bus on this one. If you really want to party with me, get your hands off those NFTs. And if you think my corny jokes are actually endearing, well, hit that like button. And if you like Steam Deck news or PC gaming related content, make sure to subscribe and slap the bell. Next up, and I'm sure you've all heard about this one, Valve introduced a new program on Monday called Deck Verified. They tweeted about it and released a new video to their YouTube channel outlining the details. They will be testing Steam games for playability on the deck and putting these games into one of four buckets. Verified. Playable unsupported, and for the games they have yet to test, unknown. In addition to the video aimed at us, the consumers, they also released a video aimed at the developers. This was on their dev-focused YouTube channel, Steamworks Development. In this video, they gave even more detail about what they will be testing for and how they will choose what games to test. They also point to their developer-focused documentation, where they dive even deeper than that. With regard to what they will be testing for, they gave three categories. For input, they will be testing for full controller support. In their words, this means that the game must, quote, support Steam Deck's physical controls. The default controller configuration must provide users with the ability to access all content. 
players must not need to adjust any in-game settings in order to enable controller support for this configuration, end quote. So it sounds like, for example, a mouse and keyboard game that requires you to go into Steam menu and select or create a controller profile cannot be deck verified. Also in input, they specify that the game should show appropriate controller glyphs or icons. They should match the XYAB standard from Xbox that Valve has adapted. They specify that mouse and keyboard glyphs should not show when they are not the active input. And finally for input, they say that the text input should be navigable with only a controller. Either using Steam's own on-screen keyboard or as a developer, you can roll out your own assuming it meets their criteria. The second category that Valve is evaluating is display. For starters, the game should support 1280 by 800, aka 800p, or at the very least support 1280 by 720 or 720p. The latter would have black bars, but it appears you can still get verified on deck with that resolution. They also say that the default configuration must result in a playable frame rate. In other words, a user should have to do no tweaking whatsoever to reach a decent frame rate. They don't specify what that frame rate is, but based on what they've said so far, I think we can assume a consistent 30 FPS is an easy pass. I would imagine 30 FPS with some drops would also pass. I'd be curious to see if something like low 20s would pass depending on the type of game. The last item under display is text legibility. Here they give detailed specifications saying that the text must be easily readable at a distance of 12 inches or 30 centimeters from the screen. This translates to the guideline of the smallest on-screen font should never fall below 9 pixels in height for 800p resolutions. They further recommend allowing configurable text size and contrast and then aiming for 12 pixel height whenever possible. And the last category is seamlessness. They say, for example, that any launchers must be easily navigable and follow all of the previously outlined requirements. On top of that, the app should not give users any warnings that the hardware or software that they're using is unsupported. I think all of this is awesome. I love what they've chosen to use as distinguishing factors between what's verified and what's playable. In this way, verified is as close as possible to the console experience I describe in the video I published on Monday. Check that out, by the way. Shameless plug, I've been told it's my best video so far, and I give a good introduction of what to expect from PC gaming if you're used to consoles. So yeah, they're giving a seal of quality here and saying if a game has a green check, we stand by it. That game will play on your deck out of the box. No need to make any tweaks to it whatsoever. Of course you can if you like, but it's not necessary. Fresh on the heels of the announcement of the Deck Verify program, Tyler McVicker published a video revealing that Valve has been quietly preparing a Half-Life 2 update for deck compatibility. Tyler is a notable investigative YouTuber that typically focuses on Valve, and you may recall me referencing his video with regard to Valve's work on a standalone VR headset. In this video, he uncovers that Valve recently pushed a huge update to Half-Life 2 in a beta branch. This update contains many long-requested bug fixes as well as compatibility enhancements that seem directly targeted at the DEX verification requirements. It now supports ultra-wide resolutions with a properly scaled HUD and has more legible text as a result. It also implements Vulkan for superior cross-platform support, and Tyler has rightfully inferred from this that Valve will likely be updating as many of their titles as possible in preparation for the launch of the deck. And some of us out there are holding out hope that they may even announce a game for the occasion. Maybe Portal 3, Half-Life 3, Left 4 Dead 3. They, they really can't count to 3, can they? Oh god, I hope they don't call the next handheld Steam Deck 2. That would suck. And how about this one? 2018's God of War has been confirmed for the PC, including Steam and Epic Games. We don't have system requirements for this yet, and it's important to keep in mind that the Horizon Zero Dawn port did have some performance issues when it first launched. That said, given how God of War plays on the PS4, I have a high confidence level that this will reach at least a playable status on the deck. Not gonna lie, I'm super excited for this one. I dropped this game after about 10 hours, and I keep meaning to get back into it, but I just have not made that push. I have no qualms about double dipping on this and playing it portably. But get this, you can now play God of War and Gears of War on the same platform. Who'd have thought? Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Of course, we are not an easily satisfied bunch, so this news only prompted more port requests. The most common ones I saw were Ghost of Tsushima and Bloodborne. I'd also like to see Spider-Man and especially Final Fantasy VII Remake. What about you? What ports would you like to see finally make their way to PC? Let me know in the comments. I have a weird tangent for you. In the last few weeks, we've heard a lot about Nintendo's new subscription tier for the Switch and what it brings. It's gotten plenty of ridicule, and I guess I didn't want to be left off the pylon, 
But really, I thought this was a good opportunity to highlight the Genesis collection on Steam. Shout out to OxyOxyOxy on the Steam Deck subreddit. His thread on the subject was the inspiration for this segment. If you look at the Mega Drive Genesis collection on Steam, it has 58 games, while the Switch offering currently only has 14. The Steam collection is missing Castlevania Bloodlines, Contra Hardcore, Strider, and Musha, which, for what it's worth, are all excellent titles. But on the other hand, the Steam package has the full series for Shinobi, Fantasy Star, Sonic, Streets of Rage, and Shining Force, whereas the Switch offering only has one of each of those. There's also Vector Man, Wonder Boy, Beyond Oasis, Toe Jam and Earl, Decap Attack, and Dynamite Heady. Switch has online play, but on Steam you can utilize the remote play together feature to play online and you don't even have to use a friend code. The sticker price on Steam is $30 and you can get it for under $10 if you wait for a deal. And while Nintendo is selling some official looking Genesis pads, you can always buy those and just use them on PC, or otherwise buy one of the 8-bit dough replicas. Plus, you get the actual ROMs as part of the package, so you can use those files to start your emulation collection. It's kind of a no-brainer. On a related note, add these to your wish list. This is a new segment I'm starting where I show off some dope games that came out this week. First up is Inscription. The game came out on Monday and already has an overwhelmingly positive reception. It's a narrative card battler published by Devolver with an awesome horror theme just in time for Halloween. If you're wondering, it gets a gold ProtonDB rating for Linux Play. Like I said, the user reviews are extremely positive and they praise the mechanics. It's important to note that while this is a roguelike, you will likely reach credits in about 10 hours with not a lot of reason to play beyond that. Still, this is one that looks like a must play. The very well-regarded tabletop board game adaptation, Gloomhaven, exits early access with a 1.0 release. Polygon calls it a marvelous turn-based dungeon crawler, and Rock Paper Shotgun says that it nails the ambition and detail of the tabletop original. If you're even mildly interested in strategic turn-based card combat, you need to pick this up or at least add it to your wishlist. The most unique game of the week is Nuclear Blaze. It's a 2D firefighting game by the lead creator of Dead Cells. The pixel art and animations are super crisp and the movement mechanics look like a blast. It's a very short action platformer coming in at under 3 hours. There is some mystery to uncover as you battle the flames and there's also a ton of accessibility options for fine tuning difficulty and thankfully a kid mode. The creator, Sebastian, says that his original intent was to create a game for his 3 year old boy and I love that. Check it out. They Always Run is a game I've been looking forward to for a long time. The demo was a tad rough around the edges, but fantastic nonetheless. It's a 2D action platformer with a space western setting, and it has a playstyle that feels familiar to PC-based platformers of the 90s, stuff like Blackthorn and Flashback. If you're looking for a video game to give you that Star Wars The Mandalorian vibe, take a look at this one. Finally, Into the Pit is a shooter roguelike published by Humble Games. This is apparently inspired by Devil Daggers and the Nick Cage movie Mandy. It's the Dark Eldritch setting and the quick pace for me. Some people have called it a modern Hexen or a first person Hades. Either way you slice it, this Lovecraftian FPS seems to be worth a look. And now it's time to answer your questions. Eric Dawkins asks, since the deck is a PC, what's your guess? Will I be able to stream straight from this only, like a PC? Or do you think that's asking too much? No, Eric, I don't think that's asking too much. I think that with the Steam Deck, you can reasonably stream at an 800p resolution, depending on the game. Esports games, for example, should work just fine. The thing you'll have to worry about is your connection. Make sure your connection is good enough for multiplayer and for streaming. Take data caps into account if you have them, and if possible, use a wired connection. Vigo141 asks, how much less bloated is the Windows 10N version and how much less harassment is it compared to regular Windows? So for those not aware, Windows 10 comes in a few different flavors. The N version is one that does not contain any multimedia applications that would normally come with Windows 10 like Skype and the music and video apps. It is less bloated, but I find that for gaming, Windows 10 N can actually cause more problems than it solves. You will inevitably run into games that are using pre-rendered video and are just missing the codecs that you would normally just have. You can download codec packs, but in my experience, it actually takes a bit of trial and error to get the right ones for the right games. I don't have this problem when I don't use Windows N. That said, Valve is working hard on making videos like these playable on SteamOS out of the box. So that's something to keep an eye on as we approach launch. Finally, Vision asked if it's possible to integrate French subtitles onto my videos. It turns out this was pretty easy to do. I just add a language and ask Google to auto-translate my written subtitles. So for my last video, I ended up adding French, Spanish, German, Russian, Japanese, and simplified Chinese. I got good feedback on those, so I will continue to do that for the future. After all, I think Deck Gang is an inclusive gang. Well, that was a juicy episode, wasn't it? 
So early in the video, I made light of all the Steam Deck content creators having the same on deck idea. And yeah, this week definitely gave me the notion that it's time for me to find a name and logo that are more suitable to me and are not infringing on Valve's IP. I didn't expect to have to rebrand after my rebrand, but really I should have seen it coming. So my request to you is throw me some potential channel names in the comments. I have some ideas, but also I want to hear from you. I do think I want to keep deck in the name because that's what I'm focused on. What do you think? Let me know. And if this is your first time here, I bring you a very convenient Steam Deck news roundup just like this one every single Friday, as well as some Steam or Steam Deck related content every single Monday. If that sounds good to you, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't have to remember my very specific schedule. And if you made it this far, then you are a real one and you may have heard this before. Like and subscribe, slap the bell to get notified. Tell a friend it's a vibe. Deck gang out. Goodbye.